بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ہوپ آل آف یو ول بی فائن اسٹینگ ہوم اسٹینگ سیف ٹوڈے ٹاک ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک کارسینوم آف دا بریسٹ وین وی وین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دا بریسٹ ڈیزیز اٹ مین موسٹ آف دا ٹائم از اے فیمیل بریسٹ ڈیزیز اڈلٹ فیمیل بریسٹ کارسینوم آف دا بریسٹ از اے ویری امپورٹنٹ ڈیزیز for the most cancer in the women <coughs> it is the most feared of the cancer it is the most frequently self discovered cancer it is the most common cause of death in middle aged women it is the most controversially treated mean there is a lot of controversy among the treating um, uh, surgeons physicians oncologists about the uh, treatment plan and it's lot of controversy about the uh, different specialities lot of uh, different discussions and different plan in the different protocols at the different institutions <clears throat> so it's a most controversial uh, topic about the management plan it is ranked first among the cancers in the number of surgical procedures it is ranked first among the in the radiation therapy treatment it is ranked first among the number of hormones and chemotherapy administration so it is the foremost and of all the cancer too and from the stand up view cost in the physicians fee and hospital bills around the world so we'll talk about the risk factors <coughs> the major risk factors female female gender with advancing age the risk is multiplied previously breast cancer has been treated family history of breast cancer especially the first degree relatives nelly parasity b9 breast disease talking about the intermediate risk factors early menarche late menopause irradiation to the chest area body obesity b9 breast disease again both the minor and less important risk factors are alcohol dietary factors high uh, fat meals contraceptive pills hormone replacement therapies b9 breast disease so pathological classifications and pathological types of the cancer there are two major types of cancers ductal carcinoma and lobular carcinoma both are further divided into in situ cancers and invasive cancers so ductal carcinoma in situ as you all know in situ cancer is the cancer which has not yet reached the basement membrane it is intra epithelial cancer invasive are further divided into further subtype invasive medullary type tubular type mucinous type papillary type and signet ring clear cell or inflammatory breast cancer and lobular cancer they are in situ in situ and invasive and one more difference between the ductal carcinoma and lobular carcinoma is lobular carcinoma is more uh, multifocal multicentric and may be bilateral so that point must be kept in mind when one is planning about the breast conservative surgery so talking about the clinical presentations the most common commonly involved so is the upper outer so just have a look on this picture so there are uh, four quadrants of the breast and the central nipple areola complex as it is uh, uh, labeled in the picture the 60% of the cancers they arise from the upper outer quadrant of the breast the one reason is it has an axillary extension uh, is called axillary tail and the more breast glandular tissue is present in the upper outer quadrant 60% in upper outer quadrant 12% in upper inner quadrant 6% in lower inner quadrant 10% in the lower outer quadrant 12% in the nipple areola complex 
and in lower picture you can see the purity orange skin involvement the purity orange orange peel like appearance so most common presentation is the painless lump in the breast and painless hard lump present in the breast may be associated with nipple retraction may be associated with skin changes like purity orange skin ulceration chest wall fixation and also known as cancer encrosive when the skin involvement over the chest wall is more than the breast beyond the breast and then the first symptom could be the axillary lump first symptom could be the nipple discharge nipple retraction nipple discharge then there could be symptoms of metastasis like hemoptysis ascites bone pain fractures this is the ulcerative growth fun getting uh, fun getting tumor foul smelling necrotic tumor so mode of spread as like other cancers it is called spread direct infiltration in the surrounding parenchyma of the breast direct infiltration through along the ducts and local lymphatics and vascular spread involvement to the skin and involvement of the pectoralis muscle and chest wall muscles regional spread the lymphatic spread axillary lymph nodes internal mammary nodes and supraclavicular nodes spread by the blood streams skeletal metastasis is very important so so bony metastasis um, uh, most commonly involved with the lumbar vertebrae thraco lumbar vertebrae femoral heads thoracic vertebrae ribs skull and metastasis may occur to the viscera like liver lungs brain and may metastasize to the skin as well diagnosis of the breast cancer so for this is we use the triple assessment all of you must be familiar in the clinical classes the triple assessment of the breast lump triple assessment include the clinical radiological and the tissue diagnosis clinical in the form of history history detail history as we're talking the risk about the risk factors the age age of menarche and age of menopause when does and how does the patient first time notice the lump history about the nipple discharge history about the risk factors as well and then uh, family history is important so clinical evaluation consists of the history the examination examination will include the clear consent isolation the female attendants uh, proper exposure uh, identifying the uh, finding on inspection like purity orange nipple attractions any uh, visible deformities derangements and asymmetry of the both breast and then at the same time uh, palpation of the lump the size is very important as it will help you in staging the mobility and the fixity of the lump then the consistency of the lump then the uh, in which quadrant it is present at which clock is present then the examination of the axillary lymph nodes is very important and if the axillary lymph nodes are palpable are they mobile are they fixed and then the supraclavicular lymph nodes so this is a part of clinical assessment so triple assessment may up clinical assessment and it is Uh, uh, history and clinical examination then the radiological and uh, radiological uh, evaluation mostly if the patient is younger than 35 years of age ultrasonography is very useful to uh, know the nature of the lump where is a solid or cystic lump and any other feature ultrasound can be helpful then the if the patient age is more than 35 years the mammography is the soft tissue x-ray of the breast is very important and help you uh, uh, differentiate between the uh, malignant or the uh, benign lumps mammography is has a very important role in the screening tool and with high risk patient and patient about the 
50 years of age. So other radiological investigation like uh, uh, help in not only diagnosis but staging of the disease like X-ray chest, CT chest, uh, bone scan, total body bone scans, they are very helpful. Then the, talking about the tissue diagnosis, we have uh, two types of tissue diagnosis, fine, uh, needle biopsies and surgical biopsies. Needle biopsies are in the form of fine needle respiration cytology and wide bore needle biopsy or true cut biopsy, short cut biopsy. True cut biopsy are the biopsies, they are more reliable and they are most mostly liked by the surgeon nowadays. True cut needle biopsy will help you to harvest more tissue than the fine needle aspiration cytology and will help you to uh, uh, the nature of the disease, grade of the tumor, behavior of the tumor, hormone receptors, estrogen, progesterone receptor, genetic studies, they are quite possible with wide node needle biopsy. Wherever it is needed, the surgical biopsies are in the form of incisional biopsy or excisional biopsy. So uh, I will repeat incisional biopsy is once you take a part of the and it is called incisional biopsy. When you remove the whole lump it is called excision biopsy. So there are the different, the, this is all about the triple assessment. I repeat once more, it is a clinical assessment which includes the history, detailed history and examination. Examination will be breast examination, axillary examination and the systemic examination and then radiological investigation will be ultrasonography, the mammography, the CT, uh, CT chest and abdomen, the XA chest, ultrasound abdomen and then the total body bone scan. And the tissue diagnosis will be in the form of either FNSE or more, more reliable, more often in practice, the true cut needle biopsy and then the uh, uh, XA, uh, surgical biopsy in the form of incisional and excisional biopsies. Hormone receptors are possible in the form of either true cut biopsy or external biopsy. This is a carcinoma of breast diagnosed on mammography. You can see the asymmetry of the breast architectures and calcifications. Carcinoma of breast diagnosed on uh, cellular smear, loosely cohesive nuclear, ple nuclear pleomorphism and hyperchromasia. So, bone scan, chest x-ray, LFTs, and abdominal ultrasonography, the bone, total body bones, isotope scans. This is very important. Staging system of the breast. There are two staging systems, more oftenly the TNM and the Manchester staging system. So, both should be known to you. Both are important. Both are almost synonymous to each other. Uh, about the Manchester staging, we have four stages. Stage 1, the tumor confined to the breast or local disease. Stage 2 is local regional disease. Nymph nodes are also palpable. Stage 3 is the locally advanced disease, mean in the form of either skin involvement or there's a fixed tumor and stage 4 is systemically advanced. So we have four stages, stage one is local, stage two is local regional disease, stage three is locally advanced, local regionally advanced and stage four is systemically advanced disease. So this is about the Manchester staging system. TNM classification of the breast cancer, again we have TNM, T stands for tumor size, N for lymph nodes and M for metastasis. T1, tumor size less than 2 cm, any size less than 2 cm, T2, tumor size more than 2 but less than 5 cm, T3, tumor size more than 5 cm and maybe less than 10 cm and involvement of the skin and a, a fixation of the skin. T4, any size tumor fixation to the chest wall or tumor involvement beyond the breast is called T4. T4 are more than 10 cm in size. When you talk about the N, N, T, N, M, N, N1 is mobile ipsilateral axillary lymph nodes. It doesn't matter how many in number they are palpable, 
and what is their size but important is they are mobile n1 mobile ipsilateral axillary lymph node n2 ipsilateral fixed axillary lymph nodes n3 supraclavicular ipsilateral lymph nodes involvement are edema of the arm okay if the contralateral axillary lymph nodes are involved or if contralateral best is involved it is metastasis it is not the lymph node involvement tnm classification m stands for metastasis if there is no evidence of distant metastasis it is m not m1 when the evidence of distant metastasis where does the breast cancer metastasize common site bones lungs liver ascites ovaries skin brain this is the order of frequency stage will if you stage will help you to uh, categorize the patient in which stage they are and you can predict the prognosis of the disease so if you have a patient with stage 1 disease the 5 year survival is 84% if the disease is at stage 2 the 5 year survival is approximately 71% if the stage 3 the survival rate drops to the 48% stage 4 it is much less le less than 18% uh, five year survival uh, with all all possible treatment follow up assess the local recurrence assess the contralateral breast detect Immunity allow the provision of processes permit early detection and the treatment. Breast cancer management. The days very important slogan. The days of surgeon in isolation, the treating cancer over are over. The days of the surgeon in isolation treating cancer are over. All must work in collaboration. means wo uh, this not the uh, time when surgeons were the king to treat uh, all along their they were sole decision makers they were uh, they decide how to operate and then surgery was the only option the treatment but since the time it uh, availability of the anti cancer drugs like the chemotherapy hormone therapy and uh, Uh, radiotherapy so no it's a team work it is a combination of uh, different specialties joint ventures all concerned should be on board no doubt the surgeon is the main person uh, and the pa uh, patient in the center the pathologist have his role to uh, in the diagnosis and categorization the grading of the tumor and helping you in uh, and uh, decision making whether the your resection margins are clear or not and then all the time they will be helpful in mammography ct scan uh, taking some uh, stereotactic biopsies and uh, family and the society is again important it's very sensitive topic all the family should be on board and the, then the financer and rehabilitation team is again important radio therapist that is radio therapy is there on the board the medical oncologist has a very very important role so it's a multidisciplinary approach as like in most of the cancer the cancer breast is an exemplary of the multidisciplinary approach it's a highly sensitive topic highly sensitive issue there are lot of controversy that's why uh, all should be on board and plan of the treatment should be uh, organized first aims of the treatment the primary aim is cure and control the local disease and axilla conservation 
the form and the function of the breast and prevention of the delay in distant metastasis. So these are the few objectives. The first objective is important. In early breast cancer, you can have a cure in around 80 to 90 percent of the patient and you can avoid recurrence, delayed recurrence, control local disease and axilla. So in the form of the surgery and the radiotherapy, conservation of the form and the function of the breast in the form of breast reconstruction or breast conservative surgery and prevention of the delay in the distant metastasis, the, the, for that the chemotherapy and the radio. So for all of these objectives to be fulfilled, you have four modalities of the treatment with you. One is for the local regional disease, the surgery and the radiotherapy has an important role. For the local disease, local clearance of the disease, control of the disease in the breast and the axilla is the surgery and the radiotherapy. For the systemic effect of the disease, systemic effect of the disease, you have hormone therapy and the chemotherapy. So you can use all of these modalities, surgery along with chemotherapy, surgery along with radiotherapy, surgery along with chemo. Low risk patient or older patient, slow disease, local and receptor positive patient respond well to the hormone therapy. Options in surgery um, modalities are the surgery, the chemotherapy, the radiotherapy, the hormone therapy. As I have just talked about, the surgery and the radiotherapy, the first and the third, they are generally. Um, the tools you can use for the local regional control of the disease. For the chemotherapy and the hormone therapy, look after the distant metastasis, distant effect of the uh, systemic effect of the disease. The role of surgery is diagnostic, curative, palliative, preventive, and reconstructive. So, surgery is the mainstay of the treatment, in as with the most of the other cancers. So, it has diagnostic role, curative role, palliative role, preventive role and reconstructive role. Diagnostic in taking biopsies in the form of incisional biopsy and excisional biopsy. Uh, we have talked just short while ago, incisional biopsy you take a piece of tissue, lump, not removing the whole lump is just to confirm the disease and diagnosis. Excisional biopsy is wide local excision are excision of the lump and subjecting for the confirmation of the diagnosis called excisional biopsy. <coughs> Cure it. Curative uh, intent with surgery is breast conservative uh, conservation plus mandatory radiotherapy. Lumpectomy, wide local excision, quadrantectomy, they are the different option with the cure. <coughs> this is very important slide. <coughs> mastectomy. There are different types of mastectomy. Mastectomy means removal of the breast. And uh, you can have different types. Simple mastectomy is to just remove the breast tissue and nipple areola complex. You don't remove muscles. You don't remove the lymph nodes from the axilla, no, no, no internal membrane nodes. So all the muscle they are preserved. You don't touch the axilla. Is called simple mastectomy and radical or health study rarely done nowadays because of the availability of good uh, anti-cancer drugs you uh, already have option to downstage the disease and give new adjuvant chemotherapy and then do the surgery you can sometime you downstage to the extent you can do breast conservative surgery so halstead or radical mastectomy is rarely done nowadays and what you're going to do, you remove the nipple areola, breast, pectoralis major, minor muscle, axillary lymph nodes, and not the internal memory. Extended radical mastectomy, again, almost obsolete nowadays because thanks to the availability of good anti cancer drugs and uh, hormone drugs. Anti extend, you remove everything chest wall, muscles, internal memory nodes, axillary lymph nodes 
pectoral muscle breast modified this fairly uh, commonly done no no in even modern day practice it's a very useful procedure defined by the patty and called patty's mastectomy or modified radical mastectomy modified radical mastectomy is uh, when you remove the whole breast along with the nipple area complex uh, you uh, don't remove the pectoral major muscle uh, preserve the muscles and just uh, uh axillary lymph nodes they are cleared uh, pectoral minor sometimes you may or may not remove the pectoral spinal muscle you divide sometimes some you don't divide just to attract the muscles so excise specimen of the modified radical mastectomy contain whole breast along with the nipparallel complex and all the fat fascia and lymph nodes from the axilla so this is called uh, modified radical or patty's mastectomy then uh, you can have uh, other mastectomies in the form of uh, toilet mastectomy when you have a fung getting growth i will show you a picture fung getting growth uh, ulcerated growth you just get rid of the foul smelly mess uh, in the form of toilet mastectomy so then you can have a skin sparing mastectomies once you are going for uh, immediate reconstruction of the breast in the early low grade tumors you can go for skin sparing mastectomy so these are the few uh, types of mastectomy mastectomy mean removal of breast so there's how it look like the wound the field the structures after removing all the muscles pectoralis latissimus axillary vein its branches axillary artery you can see the uh, all the muscles and subclavian is fat and this is after the surgery wound looking like this what is the palliative role of surgery cytoreductive surgery total mastectomy toilet mastectomy or uh, preventive procedures added procedure like oophorectomy adenal so these are the role of surgery in the form of palliation is uh, palliative toilet mastectomy in fungating tumors and then the preventive role in form of oophorectomy or adenectomy reconstructor this is a, a very important aspect once you need to reconstruct the breast in the form of silicon gel implant latissimus dorsi flaps trom flaps mastopexy opposite breast and the nipple reconstructions and sometime uh, late reconstructions sometime early reconstruction to reconstructive to it will once the fear of once the fear of uh, recurrence is less then one should go for reconstruction early reconstruction so that the psychological uh, trauma to the patient could be minimized the few images showing the mastectomy and then the re, uh, then uh, reconstruction and then the feel it's looked like the original one trom flap transverses abdominal muscle flap silicon gel implants then the axillary surgery axillary sampling is important and axillary clearance ek one is axillary sampling other is axillary clearance level 1 2 and 3 if you remain yourself restrict yourself later to the pec minor muscle it is level 1 axillary clearance if you go behind the pec minor muscle and remove all the lymph nodes it's called level 2 axillary clearance if you retract or divide the uh, level uh, pec minor muscle and go medial to the pec minor muscle it is called level 3 axillary clearance then you must have a concept of sentinel lymph node next lecture mein hum baat karenge iske upar detail mein so sentinel lymph nodes are the first lymph node which drain from the tumor size and once you identify the sentinel lymph node 
take lymph node for the biopsy and if it, it is confirmed this lymph node the first drainage lymph node from the tumor side if it is negative for the tumor cell it means rest of the axillary lymph nodes they they are likely not to be involved so if by sampling axil sentinel lymph node we can avoid axillary clearance and all the um, problems which result from the axillary clearance can be avoided so sentinel lymph node biopsy uh, can be done by two ways if you are doing it paraparatively you need uh, to give a coloring agent in the tumor site area and then you see the lymph the first lymph node which is colored with the lymph node with the contrast then with the dye you take it out sent for the frozen section in a while few minutes time the report comes the malignant cells are not present so so it means sentinel lymph nodes are negative for the tumor cell no need of axial clearance if you are going pre operative assessment then gamma you give contrast uh, radio isotopes in, in the peri ampullary area of the tumor bearing quadrant and then see with the radio camera gamma camera you check the radio isotope activity in the lymph node the first lymph node which take up the radio isotope is taken out surgically and is histology frozen in half an hour and will confirm that the sentinel lymph node is negative for tumor cell it means no need of axillary clearance if it is positive go for axillary clearance so this is the concept of sentinel lymph node biopsy we'll talk in next time as well chemotherapy cytotoxic chemotherapy means six cycles uh, so anti cancer drugs as uh, chemotherapy will uh, classically given in a six cycle one month apart and can have a many way to live one is called adjuvant chemotherapy you give uh, you do surgery and give six cycles of chemo is called adjuvant mini additional treatment along with surgery then come the new adjuvant chemotherapy new adjuvant chemotherapy is uh, in locally advanced cancers you start the chemotherapy give three cycles reassess after three month reassess your patient it will downstay the tumor mean tumor size shrinks if it was fixed it become mobile and that will downstay the tumor and then you perform surgery mastectomy or breast conservative surgery after surgery you complete the other three cycles of chemotherapy and new adjuvant this is called new adjuvant chemotherapy and new adjuvant chemotherapy has revolutionized the field of management of breast cancer because it downstays many of the non operable lesion to the extent breast conservative surgery can be performed okay so it is also called sandwich therapy you do chemotherapy reassess do surgery and then perform chemotherapy so surgery is sandwiched by the two courses of chemotherapy the chemotherapeutic agent can be cmf uh, cyclophosphamide methotrexate 5-lorazepam adramycin the long list of condition uh, drugs so chemotherapy can be adjuvant can be new adjuvant chemotherapy can be primary chemotherapy in metastasis disease and inflammatory breast cancer we start chemotherapy as only a palliative measure and is called pediatric chemotherapy in the form of primary therapy no surgery is offered in such condition complications of chemotherapy is no chemo nausea vomiting mucositis alopecia leukopenia and thrombocytopenia radiotherapy can be given preoperatively perioperatively postoperatively and quart quart is quadrantectomy mean when you do breast conservative surgery you remove the quadrant of the breast q u then a r t a stand for axillary clearance r t stand for radiotherapy you remove the quadrant which contain the tumor and then do the axillary clearance and give the radiation to the rest of the breast so 
radiation can be given to the to the flap to the axilla and to the uh, uh, to the uh, bony metastasis hormone therapy is anti estrogen tamoxifen luteinizing lh rh agonist and aromatase inhibitors who should be screened who should be getting hormone therapy only those who are hormone receptor positive estrogen receptor har uh, progesterone receptors er pr and or other receptors and then you have her two receptors so those patient who have receptor status positive will be getting hormone therapy and getting benefit from that those who are hormone receptor negative will not get hormone therapy will not be benefited from the hormone therapy who should be screened every woman should be should have baseline mammogram at the age of 50 and those who are at risk at the age of 40 summary is a local regional versus systemic disease the treatment local versus systemic treatment and then decreasing role of surgery and the radiotherapy because of the very effective chemotherapy available and effective endocrine so it is it is no clear concept the breast cancer is a systemic disease right from the day one so that has changed the concept of the most of the patient changing prognosis prognosis changes the outlook and quest to find the best for all who should be screened key to early detection of the breast cancer is breast self examination mammography in high risk patient mammography in high risk patient can detect a lump in as much as 2 year before it going to be palpable so that is the role of mammography so this there's few slides how to go for breast examination just have a look and so they, these should be uh uh taught to the general uh, public and to the uh, people who are at more risk thank you very much next time we will talking about the different as uh, uh,